the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we are captive to sin and, and cannot, cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have, have sinned against you in thought, thought word, and deed, by what we have done and, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. From the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to God, God in the and highest, highest and, and peace, peace to God's, God's people on earth. earth. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly, Heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we, we worship, worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. O God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And he also in this another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord, Lord, to, to whom, whom shall, shall we go? We go? You, you have, have the, the words, words of eternal life. life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John in chapter 12. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to the festival to worship were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Be seated. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks that when you rose, you rose to draw all people to yourself, that all the world might know your death and your resurrection 
and become your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Our story today about some Greeks coming to see Jesus at a festival and the little sermon that comes afterward is set during the Passover week. In fact, this takes place next Sunday. Next Sunday, Palm Sunday, when Jesus enters triumphantly into Jerusalem. Uh, and after he's gotten into Jerusalem, some Greeks want to come and see Jesus. Now, there are, of course, because this is the week of the Passover festival, pilgrims from all over, thousands upon thousands of people crowding around, and the word that not too many days before Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, that word was being spread by witnesses to that miracle. And that made the interest in Jesus even greater. So when he came in to Jerusalem this day, he was celebrated in glory. And then once he was there, some Greeks wanted to see him. Now, Greeks here, or Gentiles, would have been at the festival, not just because they happened to be in Jerusalem and wondered about this guy who is this guy that does miracles, but because they were among what are known as God-fearers, or individuals who, through their association with friends or business people, however they know them, um, from the Jewish community, have been exposed to the faith of Judaism and have heard about the God of Israel and have come to believe. They have come to believe in the God of Israel. They are still Greeks, they're still Gentiles, not Jews, but they believe. And <clears throat> so they have come to the festival because they want to at least be in that atmosphere of the Passover feast. Now, these men could not participate completely in the life of the faith of Israel. They could not go into the synagogue back in the city that they came from, probably these men from Bethsaida, which was on the north of the Sea of Galilee, just out of um, uh, the sort of line, state line, country line, whatever you want to call it, of, of Israel itself in that day. Uh, and we've Andrew and uh, Peter were born there, and Philip was born there. It was a mixed city, a city that would have Jews in it and Greeks in it and Romans in it and probably people of other nations and, and countries and identities um, also. And they probably already knew Philip. If they were God-fears, they might have learned even from Philip their faith. And so they come to Philip and ask to see Jesus. And then Jesus almost seems to ignore them. Almost. The response that Jesus has to Philip and in Andrew who helped him, um, the response that Jesus has, I've always just thought, why didn't he say hi? Oh, you came to see me. You came all the way from Bethsaida. You're Greeks. You're God-fearers. <clears throat> Hi. I'm glad you came. I'm sorry you can't come into the temple, but I'm glad you came. But instead, he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. And I have always thought, what is this guy, where is this sermon coming from? And then I finally realized, the Greeks, as they came to Jesus, and these Greeks, by the way, represent you and I. 
they were not allowed into the Jewish faith, even though they believed in the Jewish faith. But I've come to believe the reason they wanted to see Jesus was to see if they could come into the fold of Christ. That perhaps in Jesus they could be fully included in the faith rather than partly included in the faith. <clears throat> and so Jesus' way of saying yes to them, yes to us, is to share with them, almost in a nutshell, what it means to be a disciple. And first, unless a grain falls into the earth and dies, it's not going to bear much fruit. In the basement, I think, I have, I hope when I check it out that it's not there, that it's in the garage or it's in a plastic can someplace where the mice can't get to it, but I have a bag of grass seed. And wherever that bag of grass seed is, it has been in its bag at least 10 years. <laughs> and wherever that bag of grass seed is, whether it's in the garage or it's in the basement, one of the two, it has yet to grow a lawn. It might be nice to have a lawn on the concrete. But unless dies, that is, unless it is planted in the earth, it sits in a bag in the garage or the basement. It doesn't do a thing. And so Jesus is beginning with what? Discipleship begins with his death. That he is the one who came to die. Something that seems foolish, something that seems inexplicable, something that seems to make him from the one of glory that they celebrated coming into Palm Sunday as just a, well, that's kind of pathetic what happened to him. And now... It makes no difference who he was. But there is a most beautiful no in this little sermon of his. First he says, you know, the grain of must die so it will bear fruit. And think about that. Um, if you plant a kernel of corn in the earth, in your garden, and it grows up, does it grow only one more kernel of corn? What does it do? All the ears of corn that it might be on, it's several ears of corn, and they've got all the kernels, it multiplies. And so Jesus is saying, unless he dies, unless he goes through with that, the faith cannot multiply. And we cannot die to sin. We cannot die to the lures and the idols of the world unless he dies and we die with him. And when do we die to sin? In our baptism. In our baptism. So that we may rise to newness of life. We are planted into Christ in our baptism. And so after sharing this image of discipleship to the Greeks, to us, so that we know what is essential and who we shall be in Christ through our baptism, then he says, now my soul is troubled. And I don't know if he's talking to himself out loud or he's talking to the Greeks or he's talking to the world. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour. Do you remember how he sweats in the Garden of Gethsemane 
And he says, Father, if thou wilt take this cup from me, this is John's garden of Gethsemane. Father, save me from this hour. And then Jesus does the one thing that gives us redemption and life. He says, no. The smallest word, no. The word that changed life, no. I will not walk away. I will carry that cross. For this reason, I have come to this hour. After this lesson is over, the people say, well, you can't be the Messiah because we read in the law that the Messiah will come and be glorified and eternal forever and be with us in his glory forever. Cut out that peace about the cross. But it cannot be missed. Cannot close our eyes to the crucifixion. Now think of this. How many eyes do I have in my head? Two. Two in the front? None in the back. It's a good thing that we didn't have children, Lois. <laughs> Now, if you close, close one of your eyes, close one of your eyes, what changes about your vision? Half. Depth perception, and also what about what you see? I cannot see Brian. Maybe that's a good thing, <laughs> but I can't see him. Ah! You could still see me, you couldn't. <laughs> All right, close the other one, what happens? Same thing, I can see Brian now and I can't see the uh, Gustavus Adolphus over here in the window. If we are to see Christ, we are the Greeks and we are to see Christ, we must see Christ with both of our eyes, which is to say we must see Christ who died and we must see Christ who rose. Christ is not Christ without the cross, and Christ is not Christ without the rising. Do we want to see Jesus in this little gospel? Jesus says then, I will show you about death and about glory, about dying and about rising. With both eyes, we see in faith. Amen.
Friends, we arise and with the whole church confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Is great. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence. And you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. You promise to write our law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect our mercy, justice, and peace and give them creativity to work for all the welfare of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying and all who grieve. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation, and learning ministries. Give us truth and wisdom to teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcasts. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. We pray this day for Tom, Joe, Robert, Deborah, Jerry, Lucy, Marge, Cecilia, Sharon, Annie, David, Randy, Hillary, Walter, and those we name aloud in our hearts before you. Logan, Sandy, Christopher. Let us pray. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We pray, praise you for those who have given us words of wisdom especially Thomas Cramner, with all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to And give you peace, and give you peace forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh,